Have you guys ever wondered how to actually read logs? I mean like, actually understand all the gibberish that's presented right in your face. I definitely faced this problem when I first started my job. So in this video, I'll show you guys from the point of view of a cybersecurity SOC analyst on not only how we can read the logs, but also how we can understand the meaning of the logs and how we can go about using it in real world scenarios. By the end of this video, you'll have an understanding of the logs in their raw format so you won't be intimidated and you'll know exactly what to do. First, we need to understand what are logs. Logs are basically a record of all the historical events. So let's say you went to McDonald's for lunch. If we were to have an event log for this, then it would be something like what time you arrived, what did you order, your name and details, how much you paid and your payment method, and what time you picked up your order. In other words, it's a receipt. Now, why is it important to have this type of logs, especially for business or in cybersecurity? You might have guessed it already, but it's so you have proof or evidence of what happened. So if you need a refund for your McDonald's, you have a receipt for it. Likewise, in cybersecurity, if you had a security breach in your system, you have event logs for this. This makes the job easier for SOC analysts to investigate and trace the root cause and perform the relevant remediations. Now that we have established the meaning of logs and its importance, let's understand how we can visualize the logs. Logs usually come in different types of formats. The most common types are CSV and JSON. CSV stands for Comma Separated Values, which literally means what it says. A single log entry has their values separated by commas, and for each entry, it's separated by a new line. JSON format is basically like a key value pair. For computer science people out there, it's just a hash map data structure. So this here is an example of what a JSON format looks like. Okay, now that we have gone through the common log formats, let's hop onto Splunk. You can use any type of sim to ingest the logs. I'm just more familiar with Splunk. All right, so here in this window, we can see a bunch of stuff. I'm not gonna go into how the logs are ingested in this video. Feel free to check out this other video where I go through how to set up Splunk and ingest test data. All right, to start off, we need to understand what we're seeing here in this particular window. We can see that we have fields time and event here. So for each event log here, we can see that it's separated by a shade of gray. And we can see the time for each event, so we can use that to narrow down a specific event if we need to. Let's open up the first log event. So up the top here, we can see that the text here is separated by commas. That's how we know that it's a CSV format. And for each individual values that were separated by the commas, we can see that they have fields assigned to it. So for this particular example here, we can see that Splunk has automatically separated this particular field as content. And this field is something about failed passwords. And we can also see that it has IP address and port here. So we know this event here has something to do with network and authorization. We can also see on the left panel here, Splunk has automatically extracted all the fields and placed them in a neat fashion. So in this field event template, we can see the most common types of events that's happening throughout all the logs that we are receiving. So if I were to do this, I can see we have some events on disconnections, some events on failed passwords, some events on invalid users. So based on this, I can start to think about the more common types of attack we might receive like brute force attempts. So if we think about this further, brute force attempts are usually when users would type in lots of passwords and they would get lots of failed authentications. Basically, they're trying different types of combinations to try and get into your account. Now, how do we navigate around these event logs to narrow down to specific brute force type of events? This is where we need SPL, which stands for Search Processing Language. SPL is quite similar to SQL, so if you know that, then this is going to be quite familiar for you. What I'm going to do to narrow down for failed password events is just to put in double quotes and type in failed passwords. So what this is doing is just to search for the substring failed password in all of the events. First, we need to know which fields we need. So let's scroll down a little bit and look at the interesting fields. We can see in the event template, we have some field passwords here. Now we can use the table function and put in the relevant fields. I'm going to put underscore time. So that's the field for the time here. And then I'm going to put in content and event template. What this is doing is basically throwing away all the fields that we don't need and focusing on the ones that we do need. All right, so let's unpack more of what we're seeing here. So if we compare the content field and the event template, we can see that the content field has more data. We have the IP address and port here, whereas in the event field, it doesn't have anything. So we can pretty much drop the event template as well. 
So let's delete that from our table. Now this looks better. Now let's say we don't want to focus on the invalid user in the content. So how do we exclude these? What we can do is just do a search content does not equals to wild star of invalid. So this is just going to look for the keyword invalid. Now we can see that the invalid user events are no longer here. The next step is to extract the data from the content field. So the useful information we're looking to extract from here is the user, the IP address and the port. So what we need to do here is to split the content field by its white space. So let's do an eval function and assign a temp variable. And let's use the split function and content do white space. So here we can see that everything from the content has been split. Now we need to figure out how to extract the user, the IP address and the port from all of this. And we can do that using index. So this is basically a list and the index starts from 0 to 1 to 2 to so on. So failed would be 0, passed would be 1, 2, 3 and so on. So here we can do a comma and go to the next line and let's type in user equals mv index and let's do temp and let's figure out the index for the user. So we got 0, 1, 2, 3. So let's put in 3 here. And let's go comma and new line. Let's put IP MV index and IP will be 345. New line, let's do the port equals MV index temp 567. And let's hit enter. So now we can see we've extracted the IP address, the port, and the user. Let's clean this up by removing the unnecessary fields. So we can do fields minus content temp. So now that we've cleaned everything up and extracted the data, what does this show us? What this is basically saying is at this particular time, this user root failed a password login from this particular IP address in this port. And we can see this is happening a lot. So we can do an aggregation to see an overview of what's going on. So if we go back up here, we can use the stats function and we can do count by IP, port and user. Now we can see there's still some duplication going on. So let's further refine this. I'm going to remove the port and let's make it the top 10. All right, these are the top 10 users, which has the highest count for failed password authentications. From a brute force perspective, we can pretty much classify all these users as suspicious and require investigation. Now, if I were to investigate this, I would need more details for the IP address. So what I can do is use the IP location function, which is going to bring up more details on the source of the IP address. Now we can see that our top IP address is coming from Beijing. And from a security perspective, if your organization doesn't have any business to do with Beijing, then this is a huge red flag. And if this domain or IP address is malicious, then all we have to do is just to block it on the firewall. All right, so that's pretty much the basics on how to read and understand the logs so you can perform actions and investigations. Hope this video has been helpful for you guys and leave a comment down below if you want to see more Splunk videos. Thanks for watching.